All right, so uh, y'all made me have to stand up for this one. Uh, I was trying to sit down, and 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 I was gonna do this in a couple of weeks, but uh, Greg said something there that just I just said I got to do this right now. How, how many of y'all uh, remember uh, in Living Color? How many of y'all remember Rock? How many of y'all remember South Central? Okay. Guess who owned that network? This, come on, come on. Rupert Murdoch. So, so let me explain to y'all how we got Fox News. Okay? They launched Fox Broadcasting. They put on black content. We run to Fox. Live in the color. Do y'all know why there is a Pepsi and now Apple Music halftime show at a Super Bowl? Because one year in Live in Color put on their own Super Bowl halftime show and all these eyeballs left the Super Bowl and they went over to the In Living Color halftime show and the NFL said, oh, hell no. That's when you got the big halftime performances and they turn into major extravaganzas because of In Living Color. Why did Kenan Ivory Wayans quit and his family leave? Because what Fox, Fox started doing was putting in living color reruns on Fox stations, driving down the syndication value of in living color, and they let Wing and produce any more shows because y'all cheating us out of our money. What did Fox then do with the money made? from black people building up Fox. They landed the NFL. NFL used to be on NBC and CBS. Monday Night Football was on ABC. Fox offered a billion dollars plus for the NFL rights, and that's when it went from CBS over to Fox. But guess what happened after they got the NFL? Bye-bye in living color. Bye-bye rock. Bye-bye South Central. Bye-bye all of the black programming. Now, some of y'all watching me right now, some of y'all saying, okay, Roland, mean, that, that's, that's, that's all that history. I mean, you, you, you just bringing up old stuff. I mean, why, why, why are you sitting here? Uh, uh, why are you sitting here? Uh, 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 why are you sitting here bringing up old stuff? What has been all the rage for the last year? What? What? what hold up! What, what? What have you heard, Greg and Reese? Man, did, 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 did y'all see that movie on Tubi? You need to get on Tubi. You need to get on Tubi. You need to get on Tubi. You need to get you a move on Tubi. You need to get on Tubi. You need to get on Tubi. Go to my iPad. Tubi sees impressive growth with over 74 million monthly active users. Keep it right there. Mm. Mm. Saying it right here. Do y'all know who owns Tubi? Pull a picture up. Who owns Tubi? He does. Wow. What is Fox doing? Black people, listen to me. Good Lord. Listen to me, black people. You built Fox Broadcasting, mm. which gave them the financial wherewithal to, be, to get the NFL. They get the NFL, build up the financial wherewithal to launch Fox News. Now we're living in a digital world. Yes, sir. And what is Tubi doing? 
Mm. Black content, black content, black content, black content. They dropping black. All the, oh, my, my, I see all the Instagram posts, the Twitter posts, my movie on Tubi, my movie on Tubi, movie on Tubi. And guess what? Their numbers are blowing up. Their numbers are blowing up. Black people, you are turning Tubi into one of the largest fast channels, which is basically a digital channel. They're doing it with black content. Look at it right there. Look at all these. Y'all, look at this. This is how they are competing against Netflix and the rest of them. Black, 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 black. Do y'all understand that Fox sold its entertainment division to Disney a few years ago for 70 plus billion dollars? Fox, Fox Studios? Yeah. Fox Entertainment? All of their Fox Entertainment assets sold to Disney. That's right. They retain Fox News, Wall Street Journal, New York Post, and those assets. So Fox, right now, Fox right now is building a digital brand yes. on the backs of black people. Yes. And you know what we doing? We going, oh, I'm on Tubi, I'm on Tubi. <laughs> oh, I'm on Tubi, I'm on Tubi. Oh. Now, now I understand the desire to have our content being places. What? Did Greg's brother say in the promo video, <laughs> bring your eyeballs home. I've been telling y'all where black eyeballs go, that's where the advertising money goes. Mm. When you send black eyeballs to gossip, to mess, to entertainment, they gonna sit here and make it rain. Yes, sir. Tubi is trying to lock up several hundred million dollars in ad money. And there's a declining number of dollars from broadcast networks coming to digital. And Tubi said, y'all know how we can sit here and grow fast as quick as possible? Let's sit here and go after all them Negro eyeballs with ratchet shows, with a bunch of bad movies. And I can't tell y'all how many group chats I've been in. <laughs> Tubi, 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 Tubi. Why am I unpacking this in the way I am? Because I've been trying to explain to y'all <laughs> how media works. Hmm. If we are so powerful with these and we can generate billionaires in all these other places, mm -hmm. what in the hell can we actually do if we choose to say, you know what, I'm going to lock my eyeballs on the Negro Leagues and the Negro Leagues is really going to be the major leagues. But you know what we do? We go, they letting us be in the major leagues. Yes, sir. And guess what happened? The major leagues took black talent, but did not bring in black owners. Right. <clears throat> Tubi is saying, black talent, I got you. Mm. And we mm. like, yes. Mm. Feeding the beast. Oh, oh but, 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 man, they, they, they paying good money for movies. Why do you think they paying good money for movies? Because the black eyeballs are there. There are mm -hmm. black platforms that are out there. Do we mm -hmm. support them? And right. that, and that. Right. And so now, y'all, if you causing Tubi to explode, all you doing is making Fox News more powerful. Right. That is what I'm trying to get us to understand. And it's hard for our people 
to step back and understand the media game that's at play. What y'all have been hearing Reese say and Greg say, you need to understand the infrastructure. See, we just turn on the radio, we just turn it on TV. Ain't nobody saying, hold up, who own this? Who, 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 who own this? Just like many of black folks who are public workers, y'all sitting here saying, y'all like, man, look at my 401k, but you're not asking who controls the pension fund and who is the investment firm that controls your pension fund? Because what you will understand is one of the biggest Republican donors in America is Steve Schwartzman, who is the CEO of BlackRock, and they control trillions of dollars of capital in this country. So when you are excited that BlackRock is investing your money, what you are actually doing is funding the man who's funding the Republican Party. Y'all had better understand how this game is working. Greg, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, this is the, here's the piece that I'm grappling with. I think we all are. The disconnect. The, on the question of reliability, there is no debate. We see you, me, Reese, Lauren, Scott, you name it, everyone who appears here seven days a week, all of the shows, we all encounter this. Everywhere we go in the, in, the, in, the, in the U.S., in the world, outside this country, I can testify that, there, there is a reliability people associate with this program specifically. Reliability and in information, reliability and stories. As you say, things you're not going to see anywhere. I sat and watched uh, Eddie Reese Johnson's funeral and, 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 and because it was streaming here. So on the question of news, they say not the empty content, not the foolishness. There is a standard here. When I listen to at least the shows that black folk have on Sirius, I'm talking about news and commentary shows, Reese's show, Clay Kane, Joe Madison, Karen Hunter. You know, there's a, there's a form of reliability there. When folks, and Karen says this sometimes, she says, you know, in many ways, journalism is dead. Why? Because now you've got, and again, it's no shade at Shannon Sharp. There's no shade at everybody on YouTube. You got people commenting on news who aren't researchers, who aren't journalists, who, who are not, don't have a background, and the eyeballs are being attracted because it's mixed in with this foolishness. The disconnect for me is while these fascists, while these white nationalists, while these folks like the Heritage Foundation funded by billionaires and subsidized by very people that we are subsidizing with our dollars are lining up because they have the money to carpet bomb our sensibility. Boom. Mr. Farufo is a joke to take out the president of Harvard and he got a degree from Harvard Extension and is down there messing around trying to create a whole new version of a school that was a legitimate university till DeSantis got a hold of it, that new school in Florida. While that's happening on our side, we can watch by the millions, Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp. We can watch by the millions, Gilbert Arenas and whoever else. We can watch by the millions, Kwame Brown and whoever else is the flash to pan the moment. But when it comes to news rolling, this is what I'm trying to understand. Where is the disconnect when it comes to us bringing our eyeballs not only home, but home to a specific type of content when a Byron Allen has poured millions into a channel that nobody watches? When BET eliminated any even gesture toward news, where are where where's the disconnect with our eyeballs for the things that will help us when you have been with this network and this specific show traveling in terms of dealing with voting rights, traveling in terms of activism and organizing, traveling in terms of the injustices our people face and how we are solving the problems of combating them? Where's the appetite for bringing our eyeballs to that specific vein of content? It That's is, what I'm losing. It, it, is, it is because, because we, again have black people who are in the black space who want to operate in silos. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go, go to Reese in a second. I'm going to say this. Mm. I was on a phone call and I told Byron when Black News Channel offered me a show. And it was a joke. I'm, I mean, y'all, like, <laughs> it was so laughable. I literally said, I'm going to do y'all the favor and not even respond. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Okay, y'all. So Byron asked me what it would cost. And I told him. 
Now, here's the deal. I ain't got a problem saying it because it's true. When Byron bought black news channel assets, Byron could have licensed this show. Yes. Got to. Now, here's the deal. I got no problem launching your own shows. But who's watching them? If, if li listen, TV One celebrates its 20th anniversary on MLK Day on Monday. I was the face of the network. Yes, sir. I traveled this nation getting local, local um, cable people to carry TV One. I know I got an audience and I can bring eyeballs. So you want to launch something and nobody watch, or do you want to actually work with an existing partner? Don't think, right. for, don't think for a second when Tyler was talking about, about, about buying B&T. Do not think for a second when Tyler was trying to buy BET that me and Tyler did not have a conversation. Hmm. Why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this is because we as black people need to understand that the storm that is headed our way is a cat five. Reese, I don't under, I, I don't think people understand. I'm gonna say this again. We are sitting here watching all kind of other stuff, and we ain't watching this news channel, and there's a yes. cat five that's brewing in the ocean that's gonna make landfall. And see, if you over here laughing and giggling and not watching that news channel, you can't prepare for the Cat 5. No. And then when the Cat 5 hits, you're like, oh my God, what happened? Because your ass wasn't watching the news channel trying to tell you the Cat 5 is coming. You got Elon Musk right now, for Mint, who is apartheid Elon Musk. Yes, sir. Who is using Twitter to drive racist messaging, who now is championing the notion that DEI is the, oh, and, and, and black pilots having low IQs is the reason the door came off the American Airlines door. Now you got, I need y'all to pay attention. That thing circulated on Twitter. Laura Ingram had a pound discussion on Fox News. M Matt Walsh, Daily Wire, is talking about it, same thing. So now they're saying, oh, oh, uh, uh, oh, D DEI is now the reason. You got Matt Walsh predicting that there are gonna be airplane fatalities because of DEI. Frank Luntz posted, hadn't been a fatality in an airplane crash in America since 2009. Yo, they literally are attacking every institution. That's right. And don't think for a second they're not coming after HBCU. Just because the affirmative action rule against affirmative action uh, affected PWIs, oh no, don't understand. And again, Reese, that's a cat five brewing that's gonna make landfall. And we over here going, man, damn that shit. I ain't voting. I don't see enough of Kamala. I don't, she ain't really black. Damn Joe, cause he too old. Or forget this whole stuff. It's a cat five. Project 2025 is a cat seven. This thing <laughs> is coming. And yep. as and that scene from Scandal. Oh, Joe, Joe Morton and the Kerry Washington, you running your ass around in the field of daisies and they, uh, run like the field of daisies and bombs are going on all around you. The media apparatus is how they are driving the messaging, Reese. Right. Absolutely. And, and I do have to say there are black people that have multifaceted interests and you could watch Roland on uh, at six to eight and go watch the Cat Williams interview. They're not mutually exclusive. However, I want to address Dr. Carr's point about the disconnect. And I want to say that the disconnect is very much manufactured. We don't have a democratic um, media 
or even social media apparatus. Everything is algorithm to the point to where these algorithms and formulas, which by the way, have bias already built in them, have figured out or they've convinced themselves, which then drives what you see, what people want to see. And that is uh, just a self-fulfilling prophecy because what gets the clicks, what gets the attention is what people continue to see, not necessarily what all your interests are. If you go look at my Instagram Explorer page, you would think that uh, 99% of my interests are hair videos and makeup videos. And I, I, I'm not good at makeup and my hair is just very basic. And so these, these social media and the way that we get our news is very much manufactured, manipulated, and it's getting increasingly siloed. And that's why you don't see the information breaking through. That's why we need to invest in the information that people receive. That's why we have to interact with the information that we want to see if we want to keep seeing it. So that's really where the disconnect is because it's a, it's something that is driven to us because we are signaling to it that that's that we want to see. And unfortunately, we bless too much mess. And I will be the first one to say, if I'm on video saying motherfucking boom, 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 that video is going to go more viral than if I'm sitting here buttoned up. Now, is that why I do it? No, I mean, I, I get, I turn on the camera, what happens, happens. But I recognize that the reason why this is getting reposted on the blogs and this is the reason why this has a million views is because I'm giving the people, what the algorithms say that the people want to see in the way that they want to see it. And so the only way to combat that, there's no organic way of combating things that are manipulated. There has to be an investment. And until we figure that out, right. that we either need to make the investment or we need to fight back with our eyeballs and we need to fight back with interacting with the things that we want to see, there will continue to be this disconnect and this imbalance. And, and let me be real clear. I, I need people to understand. I know Shannon. I ain't dissing Shannon, I ain't dissing Kat. No. But what I'm trying to get our people to understand is, I know how the advertising mind works. Mm. I've been looking for this interview and, and I'm gonna find it. When OWN launched, mm -hmm. OWN launched, and they were, the first two weeks, the numbers were through the roof. You know why? Because black women kept coming. But they, they were like, well, where's stuff for us? After the first two weeks, OWN's numbers cratered. Because they were seeing <laughs> the Judds, they were seeing Jenny McCarthy. They were like, where, they were like, where are the black people? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to tell, tell y'all, and I'm telling you, the, 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 Eric Logan, who was the president of OWN, told I me, mean, so what I'm telling y'all, it's true, and I need y'all people, all y'all people watching, listening. I tell you, I've been, all I do is media since I was 14 years old. This is what my dedication, this is my ministry. Yes, sir. I watched it. They spent $381 million their first year. They were losing money like crazy. Oprah talked about being depressed. There was one show that did 466,000 views. About 70% of those people were black called Sweetie Pie. Wow. Everybody keeps saying, oh man, wow. Tyler save on. That was wow. on, that was on 2.0. Wow. No, that was on 3.0. On 2.0, it, it was Sweetie Pie. Sweetie Pie. They were shocked with the black numbers. So you know what happened? Well, let, let's try one more show. Beverly Johnson. That's when Oprah patched up her relationship with Iyanla, uh -huh. brought Iyanla back. Latoya Jackson had a show. Flex and Shawnice had a show. Dion had a show. That was a show that I actually liked. It was the three white women, they were sisters. They were, these old, old white women, they were hilarious. That was the last show on OWN that featured white leads. Ever since that show, and it started with Sweetie Pie. Everything on OWN's been black. Everything <laughs> on OWN has been black. But I'm about to mess y'all up. Oprah, it was 50-50. Oprah sold her stake back to uh, Discovery. What do you see on OWN now? A lot of, 
a lot of uh, reality shows. What happened to all that premium prestige content that was on OWN? I'm trying to get y'all to understand TV. When they launched, Sheila Johnson did an interview. And Sheila Johnson said they need more black content for uh, them to survive. Uh, uh, this is what Sheila Johnson said. She said, but people need to understand it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because the advertisers say, no, don't show that stuff. Put on some games, put on some, some comedies and put on, uh, put on some stuff, some award shows and all the other little, all the stuff they sprinkle in and we'll, we'll fund that. Wow. We ain't gonna fund that. So what then <clears throat> happens is you put that on, algorithm, Reese was talking about, oh, it's, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, guess what? They, they want more of that? Boom! Cable news is called a tent pole. A tent pole means successful show, and you build other shows around the tent pole. Mm -hmm. Housewives became a tent pole. You got Housewives, Atlanta, New Jersey, New York, Beverly Hello. Hills. You got about 30 Housewives. Potomac? <laughs> what, what the hell? On own. Tent pole. <laughs> yes. Ready to love. Tent pole. What is it? Love in Huntsville? What the hell is that thing called? Love and marriage, Huntsville. I do watch that. Uh, okay. uh, no, 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 no. But remember, before Huntsville, it was Charlotte. I See? It was tent pole. It was tent. See, how, how many of those shows have you now had? Tent I poles. They're all the same. Guess who's targeting? And guess what? Black women, y'all the target. We. Lifetime. They are all understand the advertisers are like, put that on, put that on. That's what they're willing to fund. Understand, I'm going to put this out here because I ain't got a problem doing it because they ain't sent us no money at all. <laughs> and they just, they just got rid of Kirk McDonald, who was a CEO of Group M. He was black, but they never gave us any money. Do y'all realize, do y'all really, do y'all really want to understand why I launched all the Black Star Network shows in February of 2000, uh, in 20, was it 21 or 22? Wow, it was 2022. It's because we had a meeting with Group M and Group M said, well, let, let, let's see your slate. Group M controls about $60 billion in advertising money. Okay, 320, 340, 50 million, billion every year is being spent. So we showed them the slate of shows. Well, they didn't want to see the projected shows, they wanted to actually see the content. So I yeah. said, go ahead now. Against my better judgment, let's go ahead and launch the shows. So we did. Launch Faraji's show, Deborah Owen's show, Jackie's show, Greg Carr's show, brought in Stephanie, uh, Stephanie Humphrey's show. Yeah. We were having those conversations with Group M in October, November 2021. Nelson Panero, I think that's who we were talking with. And we had a great call. Ty Brown and I had a great He's a huge fan. That was late 2021. This is January 2024. Group M has not invested a single dollar in any show on this network. And they were the ones who said, you need to launch them before we put any money in. So we launched, so we launched them. It's understanding the media app and the media game. So I sit here and go, okay, group. Then it's like, well, uh, hold up. Well, what are y'all doing? Hold up, what do you mean? And you can't, you, can't, you can't give me the brand safe stuff because we've done stuff with Coca-Cola. Yes, sir. McDonald's, yes, Procter & Gamble, General Gamble Motors. Gamble. Those oh, are four of the biggest brands in the world. That's right. Because you've got individuals with these ad agencies and inside of these companies. And let me be real clear, we've talked to OMD, Mediacom, we've talked to Horizon, all of these different people. And it's the same, oh, 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 brand safe. But guess what ads we see on Tubi? We've done a content analysis. They've, have, they've, they've had some raunchy stuff air on Tubi. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. And guess what? Sure. 
you see many of those ads running in between those shows. So what I'm so I need the audience to now understand when we are talking about this ad agency that represents these brands refuse to spend money with us. Our response has to be like Dr. King said on April 3rd, 1968, we're not going to spend money with them. But as long as black people are so, oh my God, we've been entertained. As long as we keep watching, they're going to keep feeding us. And as long as we keep <coughs> clicking that button and the algorithm's like, oh, they want more of that, they're going to keep feeding it. And then people then go, well, man, I don't, I don't understand why we can't build no black wealth. You cannot build black wealth if you, have, if you haven't built something that can attract the dollars and then allow you to grow it in scale to be able to get bigger. The offices that we are in was an architecture company, y'all. They moved out of the office here and here. Yes, sir. If we were get, listen to me clearly, y'all, if we were getting our fair share of dollars right now, Black Star Network should be doing bare minimum $10 million in revenue a year. Yes, sir. If we were doing $10 million revenue a year, I would have that office and that office. You would have at least 30 to 40 people working for us. More shows, more content, doing the things yes. that we actually say. Yes, sir. Y'all, that's what's going on here. And what I'm trying to get our people to understand is if you're not getting support and trust me, we ain't got no billionaires, millionaires cutting us checks and no. they know we exist. Of course. They know we're here. Of course. Then people then go, well, I don't understand now why we don't have, why we can't get more stuff. Y'all, this is the system, how it's operating. I showed y'all the story when BET, see if y'all can find it, New York Times story when BET got sold. I think it was 22 years ago. There was an, an analyst in the article who said black owned media was getting 1% of the advertising dollars. 20 plus years later, it's still 1% or even less. So this thing, so the reason I'm showing y'all the tubies of the world, the reason I'm showing you that it's because when we move our eyeballs to Tubi, we're making Fox more money. The same Fox that's killing us on Fox News. So as right. black people are making Fox richer with Tubi, we're funding our own demise because they are just sitting here float with Fox News and that's why they can absorb a $787 million hit from Dominion because they like, it's all good. We're going to make that money back off them black folks watching Tubi. Greg and Reese. No, I, 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 Roland, again, I'm thinking about this. I mean, I saw that, I guess, whatever, and you could walk us through the configuration between iHeartMedia and Breakfast Club, whatever. I saw uh, Tiffany Cross, Angela Ryan, Andrew Gillum just launched a a podcast or something, and they 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 showed it on Tamron Hall. Now they they launched their podcast, and I, I think about the quality again. The question of quality here, real news, hard news, and 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 really bringing people, putting people into the platform space who need to be heard. Everyone, all the stuff going on around the country, and I think about this in terms of quality. And no, and again, this isn't uh, any uh, shade at Lenora McKelvey, but. He's not a journalist. You sit him in the seat at uh, Comedy Central, and, said, and then Roy Wood Jr. is there, who's a committee, but who's clearly a cut above beyond any of them. I'm saying all this as a backdrop to this question I have for you, I guess, which is, you know, is some of this, and I appreciate the fact you and Re Reese walking us through this algorithm and how it works as well, but are some of these decisions on whether or not to invest advertising dollars based on something other than Revenue projections and and oh no no it's 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 very let me be very very clear it's it's it a lot of it's whiteness so let, let me explain so okay 
And, and I get it. Charlemagne has a podcasting network partnership. He owns it 50% with iHeart 50%. And that's called okay. utilizing their scale. That's no different than what Jay-Z, when Jay-Z talked about when he launched his champagne brand, he said, I could have launched it myself, but I partnered with one of the largest, um, you know, they have the expertise champagne com- companies. Now, what you're doing is you're leveraging scale. You're leveraging, so, so, so by launching the podcast network, Charlemagne's whole deal is, I'm gonna leverage iHeart Radio scale. They have, they own all these radio stations. They own these other podcasts. They have all of these salespeople. They already have the relationships with advertisers. And so therefore, uh, it's a scale issue. So, I get it, totally understand it. That, that, that makes, that's business, that makes sense. The reason I'm talking about scale on the black side, the reason I went to black owned media companies when we launched this, because I said, okay, y'all already have scale. Y'all already have infrastructure. Y'all already have sales teams. So versus me having to come in here, build it from scratch, trying to sit here and claw our way, why don't we partner? What I was trying to do with Urban One, Black Enterprise, Blavity, Essence, and all of them, and is the exact same, I'll throw in Byron Allen, was the exact same thing that Charlemagne did at iHeart. I simply said, why don't we partner, make this a black thing, and then you already have these assets, I will come in, do the digital programming, and what I'm doing, you're not even doing anywhere. And now you, let's utilize your scale and so when your people go out to the same agencies, they can say, we have these assets. Now we're adding Roland Martin's digital show, adding the Black Star Network. So now there's a revenue share. And so now it becomes, oh, now we can actually grow and now get some dollars we ordinarily would not be able to get. Now, why is iHeart also doing this? Because we busted our butt to create this black owned media collective to force these companies to target black owned media. So what do you do? If you create a partnership with an African American black owned company, you now can go after those black owned dollars, Uh. which is the same. So when we were going after the Biden administration to spend more money with black owned media with federal government dollars, when that letter came from uh, HHS talking about we, we, the percentage of the money of COVID money spent with black owned media, they listed the black owned media people and the black agency under black owned media was own. I replied to them, own is no longer black owned. It's no longer 50-50. Discovery owns 95% of it. So what we have to be mindful of when you have white media companies who want to create partnerships to go after black owned media dollars, but we in black owned media who are 100% black owned, we get frozen out. So therefore, so essentially they are able to grow. So what happens is, and I'll say it, when the Biden campaign spent $6 million of the $281 million in 2020, they announced this as the historic spin, the most ever. Well, that wasn't saying much because what much spent beforehand. When you read the press release, most of the digital money was going to iHeart and Complex. Complex had the largest black digital reach. Who owned Complex? BuzzFeed. So that's why when people use the phrase black media, I go, no, there's black media, there's black targeted media and black owned media. Yes. So we get caught up in the black targeted media. So black targeted gets 90, 95% of the money, black owned media gets screwed up. What I do, so when I'm arguing for black owned media, I'm not saying screw Charlemagne's podcast. No, he owns 50% of it. Fund them and us. Fund them and us and Essence and Blavity. And see, that, that's how I operate. It's almost $400 billion. Because here's the deal. Here's why I'm saying fund all of us. Disney can't eat all of it. So guess what they do? 
Disney, here's y'all cut. Comcast, here's y'all cut. Uh, Hearst, here's y'all cut. Scripps, Discovery, Warner. Uh, they all share in it. The upfronts are coming up right now uh, in May. They gonna free, that's where 80% of the money is spent. Guess who doesn't even get to go to the upfronts? Us. Our money comes in a scatter market. Just gonna get, for everybody listening, let me explain to y'all how the game works. 80% of the money gets spent in the upfronts. About 19% of the money gets spent in September in the second window. Then they have what's called the scatter market. The scatter market is the last quarter of the year. So in the oh. last October, November, December, they get, they go, shit, how much we got left over? Damn, we got about 120,000. All right, let's give it to them black people over here. Our money comes in the scatter market. Our money don't come in the upfronts. That's the system. And so the reason we can't grow is because if I can't get more ad money, I now cannot, I can't do marketing. I guarantee you right now, we can blow up our numbers if I can run ads and run promos and do uh, street teams and marketing, but I can't because my money is so tight. No, I got to watch every dollar. They don't. In this political year, every major media company right now is going, hoo-hoo, we going to see a 40% increase in revenue. Every Sinclair, Liberty, all of them. And you know why they're saying that? That's what's going to pay for them next year. And that's going to tie them over in 2025 because then they're waiting for the midterms in 2026. And then they're going to make more money in the midterms. It's going to tie them over in 2027. And they're waiting on the presidential in 2028. Those of us in black-owned media are completely frozen out in the presidential year. So therefore, we ain't got nothing left for 25. And then we holding on. I'm just going to let y'all know. We did well in 2020. I need y'all to understand. What we made and did in 2020 pay for a lot of our stuff in 2021. Yes, sir. I'm just trying to, so what, so we are not, so black people, we are on, come on, this end. This is where we are, right? Turn the camera. This is where we are. We're here. This, this, this is black people right here. This black people. We got the remote. We are not. <laughs> in the offices. Mm. This is us right here. We are the eyeballs. We're not the ones who are deciding what you actually see. So why is Taraji Henson complaining about her salary? Because we ain't the ones who are funding the movies. Yes, sir. What did Tyler, what did Tyler Perry say? I paid, Tyler Perry said he paid Cicely Tyson a million dollars for one day of work because when she did Sounder, she got $8,000. Was it eight or 3,000? She got like $8,000. Cicely Tyson in her last 10 to 15 years of life, Tyler Ooh. Perry paid her what she had never gotten in her career. Tyler Perry said he's paid other female actresses a lot more money for one day or two days work because what they never got paid. Taraji said that her scale was set when Tyler paid her what she was actually worth. Ain't that interesting that it was somebody black who was the decision maker who paid, Ty who paid Taraji her worth. Y'all, we gotta understand, we gotta understand the economics of this. And everything y'all have heard us discuss in the last hour and 15 minutes, that literally is Dr. King's sermon yeah. on April 3rd, 1968. Yeah. He literally was talking about the money. Yeah. And he literally named the companies that black people should not spend with. He literally said to black people, invest and put your money in black banks and black insurance companies. 
He literally said in his sermon that black people are individually poor, but collectively we represent one of the largest economies in the world. What I'm trying to say to black people and to conscious non-black people who are watching, we, Reese said with the out, we are driving the algorithm. So if we can drive 43 million views of Kat and Shannon talking, and I'm not Come hating. On. Come on. Can we drive 20 million on this? Alphas and AKs and Deltas and Kappas and Iotas and Sigmas and Zetas. Hope I mention everybody. <laughs> what happens? Divine Nine, rented out movie theaters. Listen to me, y'all. The Divine Nine rented out movie theaters to help the color purple earn almost $25 million on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. That money is going to Warner Brothers. <laughs> which is discovery. Yes, sir. Can the Divine Nine decide as a collective that they are going to pick four books to put on the New York Times bestseller list every single month? Same scale. Mm -hmm. same, 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 same institutions. Can you imagine Divine Nine and the Lynx and the Prince Hall Masons and the Eastern Star say we gonna take our collective members and we're going to say these are the four books that we're buying in January. These are the four books that we're buying in February. These are the four books that we're buying in March. Mm. Folks, it's the money but we have to be willing to use our collective power. And this is all Dr. King was trying to tell us before he was assassinated in 1968. Final comments, Rishi, then great. The reality is that black people are always a sure bet when you want a return on our investment. And so we just have to stop being a bargain and we have to continue to drive the the culture drive what's validated, but we have to be the validators validating ourselves. Roland mentioned the New York Times bestseller. We shouldn't wait until something is a New York Times bestseller to then say we're going to buy. Oh, now it's a New York Times bestseller. We can drive the conversation. We can drive things for it as we have always been doing to our benefit. And that's what we need to start doing. We have to harness that collective power because individually we don't have the power to change it on our own, but we recognize our collective power can make the difference to our benefit. It's not charity. It's a return on investments for ourselves in a way that we all benefit and we're better off for it. And to that point there, and y'all, I've told y'all this, that control room was built by a black engineering company. Mm. These lights were installed by a black lighting company. That mm. green screen was purchased from a black drape company. Mm. That mm. news desk was built by a black set design company. Mm. Mm. So when you invest in black owned media, we are investing in black companies. Those people have employees and families. That's how it works. So when we talk about why you have to buy black or support black owned media, then, cause guess what? When the money is going to Discovery and Comcast and Viacom and Disney, that's going to the shareholders. That's right. And we already know who 10, only the top 10% folk in this country, the top 10% of the country owns 93% of stocks. Yes, sir. So again, and again, I'm not saying, oh, don't support the color purple. Don't support Black Panther. I'm saying support black movies. But what I'm also saying, while we are saying support black movies, we also have got to be saying, um, where the black executives hmm. on these movie sets? Where's the black catering companies? Uh, Taraji talked about them 
they, they were trying to get them to drive themselves or put themselves in the van. Well, I'm sorry, who has the transportation contract? S let's stop being enamored with the black face in front of the screen or, oh, we got a black director. We need to have a 360 degree economic view that goes beyond us. And this is where we've got to stop, Greg, just being so excited to see a black face. And again, I'm not dissing Jackie Robinson, but we were so elated with Jackie Robinson going to the major leagues and we said, man, we gonna show these white folk we just as good. We were already great. Dizzy Dean said the best talent was in the Negro Leagues. Right. But we were so fixated on going to the major leagues that it yes. literally killed the Negro Leagues. That's right. And you know what they did? They said, y'all come on, bring us all your talent and bring your eyeballs because y'all going to buy tickets and y'all going to buy jerseys. And guess right. what? They did not say, let's bring one of these team owners. No, sir. Abe Saperstein, his come goal. On. Abe Saperstein's goal, he wasn't black, but Abe Saperstein's goal was for the Harlem Globetrotters to be an NBA team. Yes, sir. And do you know what they did? Mm. They drafted a Harlem Globetrotter player. That's right. And there never was a black team and there wasn't a black owner in the NBA until Bob Johnson, who sold the team to Michael Jordan, was now sent sold the team. That's right. We gotta stop giving folks our labor and not getting our reward back. Greg, go ahead. Yes, sir. No, Roland, it, you know, it reminds me, this time, just a little bit, uh, last month, this time in 2022, you covered the Celebration Bowl. It's a beautiful moment. And I went down, I was there, and I was there this last year. I went to the Battle of the Bands, the old HBCU marching band alum, myself, Tennessee State Band. Very few people there. But it bothered me because the Battle of the Bands, Jackson State and North Carolina a t Virginia State, Florida Memorial, branded by these white companies that when they, they are beginning to understand they can just harvest our cultural uh, capital and profit. And, of course, Celebration Bowl was, was you know, 40-some thousand people there, Florida a &M and Howard. Willie Simmons, the champion, Florida a &M champion coach, now the running backs coach at Duke because his dream is to be the coach of a Power 5 football conference football team. White validation. I got it against Willie Simmons, but and then Florida a &M alumni trying to raise money to keep him, raised hundred and some thousand dollars very quickly. That ain't no money in the era of Nick Saban and all the rest of these plantation sports complex. You're not going to beat them with the dollar, but this is where I'm going with this. We are watching now, everybody watching, some people on fixed income. Some people don't have the capacity. You have made a firm commitment to create a network that is accessible and free to anybody who wants to bring their eyeballs to it, regardless of how they bring it in this over-the-top platform. Whether they got a fire stick at Amazon, whether they are watching on YouTube or Facebook, whether they have downloaded the app, whether they're going through all these, but you've made it there. Those of us who have the ability to invest in that vision, if everybody does a little, nobody has to do a lot. You can't raise enough money to keep a football coach whose dream is to coach in the white league at the HBCU, but you can certainly make enough of a contribution to keep the clean glass of water standard of black news media available to all of us, particularly when these folks who are our open enemies will not invest in it, not only because they want to keep the money for themselves because they know what will happen as our imaginations are fed and our information is fed by a standard of news that will, in fact, do the kind of things the black press used to do. This is why everyone who is able must invest in this space, if not for yourself, for the people who would but don't have it, who don't know yet that they need it. And we've got to, especially as we're going into 2024, when this may be for all the marbles, 
we better be very serious about that now. So that's all I wanted to say, brother. And thank you for continuing to keep that faith. I, I'm going to uh, I'm going to close this out this way because I just need I just think sometimes y'all need to have a visual understanding of how you invest and how there's a return on that. So we started the show off and we played for you an interview that I had with Tennessee Representative Gloria Johnson. This is the interview right here. And I just want y'all, everybody watching, just understand. So that was next to the green room in the student center where I spoke. It was just me. I don't travel with the people. But I want you to understand, I just need y'all to understand how that happens. So we're sitting in there. So this is a DJI action selfie stick. Okay, that's what this is. So we're sitting there and I'm like, I didn't know she was gonna be there. I said, hey, let's sit down and do a quick interview. So fine. I said, I need about five minutes. We did a nine minute interview. So all I simply did was sit there and take this $49.99 selfie stick, this here, with this $399 DJI action camera, and then put this here on here, and then th take this $329 DJI action uh, wireless uh, camera, excuse me, wireless uh, microphone, connected to this particular camera, that were good. There was already good lighting in there, and sat there and did the interview. And so some of y'all sitting here going, "Damn, hold up! You mean to tell me? Yep, that's right. I sat there, set it up myself, put this whole thing together, and then did that." Another interview I did was with Reverend Middlebrook, uh, who is uh, one of the co-founders of the event. He was there in Memphis with Dr. King on April 4th, 1968. I'm gonna share that interview with y'all with, with, uh, later. Plug that up, put these two microphones on me and Gloria, that's how we did the interview. This whole setup right here, y'all, you help pay for, is $800. Mm. It would have cost me $800 to hire a camera person to come out and do all that work, but I pulled this out of my backpack. Why am I saying all of this here? We don't have CNN money. We can't afford to say, oh, we're gonna have a camera op and a producer travel with you and go around doing interviews. This is how we make this happen. This is how we make it happen. We get it done. This is a DJI Action 4 camera. I asked them, are y'all live streaming my speech? They said, yes. Keenan is sitting here, he, the stream wasn't up. Keenan said, man, I don't see the feed. Not a problem. Sat this bad boy here on the podium, recorded my speech. I'm a, when I get home, I'm gonna upload it to Keenan. We gonna live stream the speech later. Yes. This camera's 399. I'm saying all of this because we are gonna do what black people do. Mm -hmm. We gonna make it work. Yes, sir. We gonna make it work. Yes, we gonna sir. get the content. We're gonna make it work. Yes, sir. But I need our people to understand we will never be able to achieve scale and have 20, 30, 50, 100 people, have crews in multiple states, have us going into the election season. We should have folks who are, who are go-to people in North Carolina, in Florida, in Wisconsin, in Philadelphia, in Michigan. We don't have that. Yes. Nobody else has it. I played you the Hakeem Jeffries comment. When a Congressional Black Caucus comes out of their weekly meetings on Wednesday, ain't one, there's not a single black press person out there waiting on them. Because we can't afford to play, pay a congressional correspondent 100000 just to cover Congress. I told the CBC, if we were able to get just $2 million of the $1 billion the federal government spends every year on advertising, I will hire three correspondents and three videographers in 90 days. <laughs> I told them that. But I need the Congressional Black Caucus to be putting pressure on these agents to say, uh, who y'all spending money with? Department yes. of Defense spending $600 million a year. Who you spending money with? I met with OMD, who controls the U.S. Army uh, uh, budget. 
they ain't got back with me. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying here? This is what I'm yep. trying to get our people to understand. Yes. It is not that we cannot do it. It is not that it's not going to be quality. Because you y'all see this show. I was in Jamaica and I pulled up the show. I was like, and I never get this be on that. I said, damn, the show look good. <laughs> and there were some things I didn't like what I saw. Change this, change this. Okay, I want you to tweak this here. But the bottom line is, I'll put this up against the other networks. Oh, no question. But we are never going to be able to cover more of what we need to cover as long as we are scrambling for dollars every single month. Yes. And so this year, let me be clear. I'm putting pressure on the political people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell y'all right now, I've made it perfectly clear to a lot of these groups out here, environmental group, pro-choice groups, progressive groups, campaigns, the number is 10 million. $10 million in advertising on this platform between now and November. That's my number. Because you know who else has a number? Sinclair. Come on. NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, they all have numbers. I've made it clear, my number is 10 million for advertising. The 10 million for advertising is going to allow me to go on the road and do four to six town hall broadcasts every single month. Mm. It's gonna allow me to go spend a week hitting five cities in North Carolina, taking the show on the road. Do y'all understand when Fox News has a town hall, how that gets paid for? The town halls that you see on CNN and Fox News cost between $500 to $750,000. One town hall. But you can spend $750,000 on a town hall when you're getting $1.2 billion. Yes, sir. What <clears throat> I, this is what I want us to understand. So when a lot of y'all sit in and say, oh man, you sitting here trying to bed them uh, for advertising, Fox, CBS, NBC, ABC, New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, you say today, Sinclair, Liberty, all of these media groups, all of these media companies right now are calculating how much money they're going to get So those of us in black owned media shouldn't be doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Every black person who whines and complains when I talk about this stuff, how in the hell do you think they are able to do what they do? Mm. And guess what? When we get our fair share, then we can say, yeah, we're going to do a $50 million movie. And yeah, Taraji, Here's your million dollars. Yes, so and so, here's your two million dollars. Hmm. Every time you hear a story of a black movie, a black network, a black production having to do stuff and try to pull and put, it's because the money was not there. Yeah. Y'all, it's there. They just don't want to spend it with us until we put that pressure on them to say, oh, that's gonna be return on investment. I'ma say it right now. General Motors, y'all didn't spend no money with us last year. Hmm. I'm expecting an allocation in 2024. Toyota, it's a bunch of black people buy Toyotas. Where are y'all at? Ford, where are you at? Chrysler, where are you? Wagoneer. Where are Mm. you? Hyundai, you got a black CEO. A lot of black folks buy Hyundais. Are you spending your fair share with black owned media? That's just in the automotive sector. Pharmaceuticals, oh, we know y'all love depending on black people. Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, all these pharmaceuticals, where is the money? Black folks, when we get our fair share there, you're gonna see mm. more shows, food shows. You're gonna see more specials. You're gonna see more show hosts. You're gonna see, guess what, a morning news show. You're gonna see weekend programming. 
the exact same way CNN and Fox and all were built, we can do the exact same thing. But as Dr. King said, we have to operate in the collective in order to make it happen. Reese and Greg, I appreciate y'all being on today's show. Thank you so very much. Uh, folks, uh, I hope you have a much better understanding of the media landscape. We started this thing off trying to explain to you how media drives narrative politically. We then segued into why progressives and liberals should be funding more of their own media so they're not sitting here saying, why is our messaging so bad? Then we segued into trying to explain to you the infrastructure on how we as black folks, how we drive the revenue of largely white media companies, Tubi, Disney, Comcast, and all of these different companies. And then we segued into black owned media. This is not hard, y'all. We have the knowledge and the expertise and the know-how. We, as we gear up for Dr. King's birthday, should be doing the exact same thing he told us to do on April 3rd, 1968, and that is to use our power and make it clear, if you are not doing right by us, we are not going to do right by you. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we are about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com.